Well, good morning, Old Blue. And good morning, all of you. I'm just getting my stuff here into the truck. It's Tuesday morning. We had a good long weekend at home. It was Canada Day weekend. Hope you guys had a great weekend. By the time you watch this, Independence Day in the US is already over too, so I hope you had a fantastic 4th of July. Let's get this truck on the road. Okay, let's just put that there for now. Organize everything once we're in there. Oh. It's always a hassle to get everything ready to go. I'm also getting our camper pulled out here ready to go. A couple of our friends are borrowing it in the next few days, so we'll get that ready for them. And then after that, uh, we have it rented out on August Long as well, so in a few weeks. So it needs to get out of here anyways and get all ready to go so that uh, can be enjoyed throughout the summer. I enjoyed this weekend at home. We had a bonfire, just Britt and I, two of the three nights. It was great. Enjoying the nice summer weather. The Canada day, it was actually pouring rain for half the day and sort of drizzling rain for the rest of the day. So we had a couple of our friends over to our house, uh, which was really awesome. A couple of new friends of ours. Uh, that was awesome to, to hang out with them. They have a little boy the same age as our son as well. So uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. And now, like I was saying, it's it's time to get back to work. The weekend's over. We have Tuesday, Wednesday to make as much money as we can. Thursday is uh, July 4th, Independence Day in the U.S. So all of our U.S. customers are obviously shut down for Thursday and Friday. And I'm going to take an extra long weekend, because why not? It's 4th of July. Of course they're going to do that. I would too. So we've got to make as much money as we can going back and forth pretty much today and tomorrow. And then on Thursday, Friday, we pretty much got to try and keep busy up here north of the border because there's not going to be much going on down in the U.S. Everything shuts down. There are fireworks everywhere, celebrations, barbecues. It's a beautiful thing. I wish I was down there for it. But uh, like I said earlier, I hope you guys all had an awesome celebration and that you were safe. Don't drink and drive. I want to get home to my family and just be safe out there on the road, okay? <laughs> Diesel fuel. Ah, yes. It's gonna be a good day. It's the smell of money. Just about to cross in Ontario, and uh, the Manitoba scale wants to see how fat I am. I'm not shy, they can see. I've got an empty trailer behind me, so what they're gonna be doing is running my tags and my numbers, making sure everything is up to date and my insurance is valid and stuff like that. they can see that all the lights are working and as I roll up to when well, no, I didn't do it this time but very often when I roll up to the scale I'll turn my wipers on with my windshield washer fluid just give my windshield a little spray that'll show them that my wipers are working because that's something that they would uh, want to check just so that they get an overall impression that my truck is in good working order that everything works and that there's no reason to pull me in for an inspection because I'm confident that they're not gonna find anything. But at the same time, I don't have time for that. I got a job to do, and I'm always in a rush. And if they pull me in for an inspection, I'm glad that they inspect trucks because they, they do catch a lot of trucks that shouldn't be on the road. But I just, it's a waste of time for me. I, mean, I already inspected my truck, but I understand you gotta do your job. So it is what it is. But I, I like to roll up to the scale and give them the impression that my 
that, that shows them that, hey, this guy takes care of his truck, it's all in good working order, well, let him go. You know, keep your truck clean. Try to keep your the outside of your truck as clean as possible. Wash it. Some guys never wash their truck. I've heard the excuse before. Well, I don't get paid to wash the truck. Oh yeah? You wanna get pulled into the scale? Roll over the scale with a dirty truck. All right, they're gonna, that's one way to increase your chances of getting an inspection. If you roll over there with a dirty truck that looks like you don't take care of it. Cause then they're gonna want a closer look. Well, what else does this guy not take care of, right? Keep your truck clean whenever you can. I understand it's expensive and you can't wash it every day. I know that firsthand, I wish we could. I'd love to wash my truck every single day, but you know, if it gets dirty, wipe it. It's like going to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom, things get dirty, you wipe it, you clean it up. You should also keep the inside of your truck somewhat organized. I know my truck isn't the most organized, but uh, if they do pull you in for an inspection, they hop up on your step and they look into your truck and they just see chaos papers and garbage all over the place, all over the dashboard. That's a good way to get an inspection. Especially if you got it all over your dashboard. Again, because they're seeing this truck roll over there, junk piled up on the dashboard. First of all, it's a safety hazard. Second of all, it shows that you don't take care of your truck and you probably didn't do a pre-trip because you don't take care of your truck and they're gonna wanna take a look at your truck. That's just a little bit of friendly advice from me. You, can, you don't have to listen to me. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, I don't know. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. In the end, it all falls down, falls on to the ambitions of the officer that's giving you the inspection, right? Just don't give them any reasons to, to pull you in. That's all I can say. They're still making progress on this four-lane divided highway here, just inside the Ontario border from Manitoba. It's a slow process. I, I can imagine it must be extremely expensive and time-consuming because they got to blast all this rock away, right? And then lay foundation and everything. I get it, but, you know, we got to keep, keep the fire to their feet. You know what I mean? You got to keep them on their toes. Let's hurry up. Let's get her done. I'd like to see it finished before winter time, but they don't care what my opinion is. <laughs> Why would they? I'm just some dude that complains on the internet. They don't care. I wouldn't, I don't know. All I know is that in Manitoba when I was a kid, Highway 59 got like an extension from pretty much the south perimeter down towards past Ildeshane, towards Niverville there if you know the area and they twinned the highway. It took them 10 years to build, what was it, 15 kilometers, or like 10 miles, a four lane highway across a prairie. No mountains, no hills, no rocks to blast away, just flat ground, 10 years. I'll never forget that. I told you this story before, right, when I was a kid, we went on a field trip to the legislature downtown Winnipeg and they asked us if we had any questions for our representative. And I was the only one with a real question. I asked them, why is it taking you so long to finish Highway 59? At that time, it was like seven years. And how much longer is it gonna take? I stumped him. The guy was sitting there stunned that he got a real question from like a grade 10 student. His answer was, budgets they keep running out of money and my follow-up was why'd you start a project you didn't have the money to finish i didn't get an answer for that one he sort of just shrugged and went on to the next pointless question that a usual regular grade 10 student would ask why are slurpees so expensive <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the other questions were i don't remember them all i know is that i stumped them and i felt pretty good about that Grade 10, how old are you in grade 10? That's uh, what, you're 15 years old, right? Sticking it to the politicians at 15 years old. And hey, I get this done. It shouldn't take 10 years. Here I am years later, I'm now 35 doing the same thing. Get it done. <laughs> My representatives must know me well. Oh, 
always messaging them. <laughs> Sending them. Like, Come on, man. I voted for you. I voted for you. Get it done. I was always interested in driving, though. Highways always were a priority for me. And sometimes I guess I forget that highways and that kind of infrastructure, I guess, aren't as big of a priority to everybody else. But I mean, they are pretty important. I mean, they're like the veins of the country, the arteries of the country. That's what keeps the economy going. If you want to make your goods and you want to sell them to anybody, a truck is going to have to pick them up and drive them down these roads to your customer and drop them off so that you can get your money, pay your employees, put food on the table. Everything is reliant on trucks bringing goods to market in North America. Unless if you have a business that's directly on the shoreline of the ocean, you know, then you can just put it straight onto a ship and sell it to someone on the other side of the world. But even if you're not right on the shoreline, if you're close by, you're gonna have to put it on a truck first and that truck will bring it to the port where it'll be put on a ship. Highways are crucial, the most important part of all infrastructure besides housing. Uh, we need places to live, but it is among the most important. And that's why I'm always, you know, advocating for better, safer highways, a four lane divided through here. It would speed up transport, speed up the economy. Imagine you're in Winnipeg, or let's say reverse this. Imagine you're in Mississauga, Toronto, and you own a business creating goods. Right? You, you build stuff and you want to sell that stuff to someone in Winnipeg. Okay, so we come and pick it up. It takes us two to two and a half days to get from Toronto to Winnipeg and for you to get paid when your goods get to your customer and you get, you get the money. What if we could speed that up? And what if we could reduce the risk of your goods being destroyed in an accident along the way on these dangerous two lane highways? Avoid the risk of a truck driver dying in an accident and your freight being lost or destroyed. What if we had a four lane highway that could reduce the time by like a full day? And we can get your goods to your customer faster. You can get paid faster. That means you can make more goods and send them out faster, right? We can get back to pick up another one faster. Less delays. You know, if there's an accident on this highway going through northern Ontario between east and west in Canada, it blocks the entire highway and everybody's freight is delayed. The entire country, the entire economy shuts down if this road gets blocked. So if a truck driver jackknifes, has an accident, blocks the highway, everybody's freight suffers for it. If we had a four lane divided, a safer highway, bigger, we would have less freight delays. That, that's, if I, if I got into government, I think that'd be the first thing that I would advocate for is bigger, better highways. Invest the money right here. But I also drive truck for a living, right? And before I started driving truck, I delivered pizza. My first job was delivering pizza. I've always been in transportation. That's all I've ever wanted to do. priorities, I guess. It seems we always get forgotten about. Even though we're like the most important cog in the big machine of the economy. Without the trucks bringing your product to market, you have no market. You have no goods to sell. And you got these cyclists traveling down here. And these guys got a death wish, I tell you. Like they wake up in the morning and they're like, hey, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do today? I'd like to go risk my life cycling down the 17 highway. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'd love to risk my life too. Let's do it. That's how I imagine their mornings go. How can I put myself in mortal danger? Let's get on our bicycle and ride down the highway. Great idea, great idea. But don't worry, you got your vest on. So at least people will see you before they hit you. <laughs> 
cyclists. Am I right? Cyclists. We've got some storm clouds coming behind me. It's just starting to rain and I just finished, so good timing. It's a very simple load to tarp today. Just a square. Well, rectangle, I guess technically a rectangle, right? Or a cube, a, cu rect a cube rectangle, a cu cubicle. That. Very simple, I'm just walking around to make sure I didn't leave anything on my deck. On the trailer. This I could probably actually, because that's going to be flapping around a little bit there. It should be okay, but... Alright, let's get going before the rain really starts. Rain, rain, rain and construction. That is the summary of summer 2024. Thanks, don't want to fall in there. Thanks. So much water this year. Water, 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 water. Guys, gotta stand out in the rain. Ah, he's getting paid. I don't feel bad. Probably getting paid pretty good. Seen. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a quiet night. I feel like I have to whisper. We're here in Brainerd, Minnesota. We're getting unloaded in the morning. There's my present for them. I wrapped it myself. So we made it down here. Yeah, they open up tomorrow, I believe, at about 8 a.m. or so. Uh, 7.30 or 8. And uh, we'll get in there then, get these tarps off, and get ourselves unloaded and see what they come up with. Like I was telling you earlier, uh, there's nothing... There's nothing on the plans yet. So for now, I'm just going to crawl into the sleeper right there. Call it a day. Nice short little trip down here. Thanks for hanging out with me. Got a little, little load. It's usually higher than that, right? There's only eight lifts in there. I think they're 20 feet long. Eight lifts, full load. I'm sitting at a gross weight right now of about 79,800 pounds. Just that. Tomorrow's another day. It's going to be a little bit of a weird week with uh, 4th of July on Thursday. And of course, like I was telling you earlier again, and I know I keep repeating myself. For you, it's just a few seconds or a few minutes apart when I repeat myself. Uh, for me, it's hours and hours, so sometimes I forget what I already told you. But uh, the U.S. is taking Thursday and Friday off, so we'll see what they come up. I might end up going home taking the 4th of July off at home and then uh, heading out over the weekend and working on the weekend. I'm not sure what, uh, how everything will turn out. But I'm tired, as you can tell. I can't even really collect my thoughts right now. Time for me to go to bed. I'm just enjoying being outside, middle of the night, in a t-shirt here in Minnesota. I love summertime. Take care, everybody. Drive safe out there. Keep between the lines. Keep the rubber side down. The shiny side up. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that like button if you did like the video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And if you want to take your support to the next level, click the join now button below this video or on my main page. You can get early access to all my videos if you become a member. That's the cost of a cup of coffee a month. But if that's not what you want to do, that's totally fine. If you leave me a comment down below, it helps me with the algorithm to get my videos out to more people. If you could do that, I'd be really happy and appreciate that. Thanks for helping me get my videos out there and helping grow the channel. Take care, everybody.